Imagine we have a function, f, that takes in a bit, either 0 or 1, and returns a bit. It is given to us as a sort of black box. We cannot look inside this function to see what it does, or try to understand how it works. The only thing we can do is send in a bit, and read the output bit. Our task is to find out if this function, f, is constant or balanced. If a function is constant, then the output is always the same, no matter the input. Here is a truth table for the constant function, constant 0, which always returns 0. There is also constant 1, which acts in the same way, always returning 1. Balanced functions, on the other hand, return 0 half the time and 1 half the time. If we look at the not gate truth table, it is balanced, since it returns 0 for one input and 1 for another input. The number of inputs resulting in 0 is equal to the number of inputs resulting in 1. If we want to find out if a function is constant or balanced, we can reframe this problem into figuring out if f of 0 equals f of 1, since if the function is constant, this will hold true. Whereas if the function is balanced, f of 0 will not equal f of 1. For a classical computer, the number of calls needed to the function to solve the problem is 2. f of 0 and f of 1 both need to be calculated to find out if f of 0 does or does not equal f of 1. So both 0 and 1 need to be input, taking two calls of the function. With quantum computers, however, Deutsch's algorithm needs only one call of the function to find out if it's constant or balanced. Before we can understand how this is done, however, we must first discuss how we run functions on quantum computers. We normally think of functions like this, where we input x and get some output f of x. This works fine for classical computers, but in quantum computation, all gates and operations must be reversible. To understand how we can make functions reversible, we will look at how a classical gate can be made reversible, and then use the same techniques to create our quantum function or oracle. If a function is reversible, then given the output, we can determine the input. For example, if we have an operation that negates the first bit, we know what the input was, as each row of the outputs in the truth table can uniquely identify the input. If we look at the AND gate truth table, however, we can't tell what the input was if it outputs a zero. It could have been any one of these three different inputs. Thus, the gate is not reversible. But we can use some pretty awesome techniques and make any gate we want reversible. One way is by returning the inputs as well as inputting another bit, let's call it C, and exclusive oring it with the output f of x. If we now look at the truth table, each output for each input is unique. This technique allows us to make any operation reversible. We use the same technique when making quantum oracles. A standard quantum oracle looks like this, where we input x and y x being the input to the function, and y being the target qubit to write the answer to. We then output x, as well as y exclusive ord with f of x. This ensures the oracle is reversible. If we look at it in terms of transformations, the oracle acts on the state xy, and turns it into x, y, x, or f of x. Now, you might be looking at this and thinking that this is a very obscure way of querying a function. But if we input y as 0, then the rightmost qubit becomes f of x. Since 0 exclusive ord with a bit value of x always returns x. So, in the case where y is equal to 0, the oracle transforms the state x0 into x f of x. Now, to get the function output, all we need to do is measure the rightmost qubit, giving us f of x. One last thing we need to understand before tackling Deutsch's algorithm is a special case of quantum oracles called the phase oracle. If we set the target qubit to the minus state, we get a thing called phase kickback, where instead of the function output being applied to the target qubit, a phase is applied to the input qubit. Let's quickly prove this result, as it is used in many quantum algorithms. We start with the input as an arbitrary bit x, and the target in the minus state. When we query the oracle, since the target is in a superposition, the unitary matrix U of f acting as the function gets distributed into the superposition and acts on each of the superposition states individually. Solving the exclusive ORs, we get 1 over root 2 x f of x minus x not f of x. Now we get two cases, 
If f of x equals 0, then the state becomes 1 over root 2 x0 minus x1, which if we factor out the x, the state becomes x minus. If, however, f of x equals 1, then the state becomes 1 over root 2 x1 minus x0. We can take out a factor of negative 1, making the state negative 1 over root 2 x0 minus x1. Simplifying, the state becomes negative x minus. We can generalize these findings through the equation negative 1 to the power of f of x, x minus. As you can see, the target qubit was left unchanged, and a phase of negative 1 to the power of f of x was applied to the input qubit. Querying a quantum oracle in this way, with the target qubit in the minus state, is called a phase oracle and is an integral part of many quantum algorithms. Now we get to the fun part. We can finally understand how Deutsch's algorithm works. This is a circuit for the algorithm. Let's label different parts of the circuit with psi so that we can keep track of where we are in the circuit. Initially, the qubits are in the state 0, 0. At psi sub 1, the qubits are in the state 0, 1. Then at psi sub 2, the state is plus minus after a Hadamard gate is applied to each of the two qubits. For clarity, we will rewrite the plus state as 1 over root 2, 0 plus 1, and distribute the minus state into the plus state. We now query the oracle. Since the input state is in a superposition, we distribute the unitary matrix acting as the oracle function into each of the superposition states. Now, if we look at the form of each of the superposition states, they're in the phase oracle form. So applying u of f to the first state, with x equaling to 0 in our general phase oracle equation, it becomes negative 1 to the power of f of 0, 0 minus. And the other state, with the input being 1, becomes negative 1 to the power of f of 1, 1 minus. To clean up the equation, we'll quickly just factor out the minus qubit. And we'll also omit it from the rest of the computation, since it is not needed anymore. Now our computation is in this state. Let's consider two different scenarios. The outputs f of 0 and f of 1 could be equal to each other or not equal to each other. In the case where they are equal, the equation becomes 1 over root 2, 0 plus 1, if f of 0 and f of 1 equal 0, and 1 over root 2, negative 0 minus 1, if they are equal to 1. But in this case, we can factor out a global phase of negative 1. So the equation becomes negative 1 over root 2, 0 plus 1. With that, we can combine these two equations for both the cases and say that when f of 0 equals f of 1, the state becomes plus or minus 1 over root 2, 0 plus 1. On the other hand, if f of 0 does not equal f of 1, then the state becomes 1 over root 2, 0 minus 1, if f of 0 equals 0 and f of 1 equals 1 or 1 over root 2, negative 0, plus 1, if it's the other way around. In the second case, we can factor out a negative 1 as a global phase, leaving a relative phase of negative 1 in the state. Once again, generalizing, when f of 0 does not equal f of 1, the state becomes plus or minus 1 over root 2, 0, minus 1. Putting these side by side, you can start to see the differences in the states. We can rewrite the state where f of 0 equals f of 1 as the plus state, and the case where f of 0 does not equal f of 1 in the minus state. Now we do the final part of the algorithm, applying a Hadamard gate to the first qubit. This in the case where f of 0 equals f of 1 brings the qubit to 0, and in the case where f of 0 does not equal f of 1 brings the qubit to 1. Now we can measure the first qubit and we are done with the algorithm. If we measure a 0, then the function is constant, as f of 0 equals f of 1. On the other hand, if we measure a 1, then the function is balanced, as f of 0 does not equal f of 1. And just like that, we have determined if the function was constant or balanced in a single query. Even though this may not seem very useful, as finding out if a function is constant or balanced doesn't have many applications, this algorithm does showcase quantum supremacy, and a lot of the techniques used in this algorithm are used heavily in other algorithms. From here, I'd recommend learning the deutsch joser algorithm, as it is an algorithm that deals with the same problem of finding if a function is constant or balanced. But instead of one bit as an input, 
It is a general case that accepts any number of bits as an input to the function.